Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Jay Listexic. This is going to be a tutorial series on Gen. Uh, each one of these is going to be um, short form, about 10 minutes long each. And we're going to focus on event sequencing in Gen. So each installment, we're going to make a component that's going to be useful in a sequencer. And then as we go along, we're going to build, um, get towards algorithmic sequences and things like that. So where we're going to start today is with a simple uh, swing slash shuffle uh, algorithm. And that's going to be really useful when we start generating lots of uh, lots of sequencer events and um, to to get some feel in there. Uh, there's nothing worse than developing uh, algorithmic you know algorithmic sequences and they all just sound like robots. So we're starting uh, in a in a place that's quite simple to execute, but it's going to be really really useful as we go on. So we're going to grab this and then in the future we'll be able to use it again. And if you've never done any stuff with Gen, especially if you've always wanted to, uh, where we're going to start is is really simple. So, a uh, great opportunity for you to get going in Gen. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got a. Well, I'm just running the the transport object uh, to clock this metro every quarter note, and that's going into a click object. So this click object is generating a, a short audio pulse, which we're using to trigger things in Gen. And this is something that we're going to use uh, over and over again um, in terms of being able to trigger things when we want in, in our gen patcher. And underneath here, we've got a uh, two live.scopes and they're going to be really, really useful for us to every single time we do this uh, to be able to see what's going on in our gen patcher uh, and the how how amazing um, the, these objects are will become more and more evident the more we start getting deep into gen. So what we've got at the moment is uh, this this uh, signal from the click uh, is going into this orange colored live dot scope, and the the red is coming out of the gen patcher. So if we think about what a swing algorithm really is, uh, most of the time it's just offsetting every second beat in a phrase um, by a certain amount of time. And so whenever we're doing like groove and shuffle and things like that, um, if you need to dial it in with a knob, that's that's ultimately what it's doing. So that's what we're doing here. We can dial this in in milliseconds and you'll see that the uh, the second pulse is, is the, the red one is offset by a certain amount. So let's actually have a listen to what this sounds like too. So I'm just sending this uh, metro over into this click over here. It's the exact same gen patch. So the original click is uh, triggering this hi-hat here, and that's going to stay locked steady on that quarter note. And then you'll hear the, the movement of the second kick in the phrase move around according to this swing knob that I've got here, and that's just in milliseconds. And you can get right up to flaming when we get close to that final note. So let's uh, let's build this patch. The first thing that we're going to want to do whenever we do stuff in Gen is uh, and and time critical operations in Max. Whenever we're doing stuff with music and timing, it's uh, going to be really important to. Grow, jump into your audio status window and ensure that scheduler is in overdrive and you've got audio interrupt on. And if you can, try to get these two numbers, the vector size and the signal vector size, try to get them as low as you can. Um, if it starts popping and clicking and stuff like that, you want to bring those numbers up. Cool. So let's make a new gen patch up. And you get this familiar looking Y-shaped default patch up. We're going to get rid of the plus. We'll keep the second inlet. And so what we need to do here is we need to be able to toggle between two states. We want to be able to toggle between two inputs. And whenever you need to toggle between two things based on a condition, the best object you can use is this ternary uh, conditional operation. And what this does is that you, you have two different states here and here. If it's true, 
this will be passed through. And if it's false, this will be passed through. Kind of similar to to a gate uh, in Max. But it's the, the syntax, when we start getting into code box, um, the syntax here is more aligned with other programming languages where you, you, it's really common to use this kind of ternary operator. But more on that some other time. So we've got our input here and we kind of want to toggle between this uh, every second beat of the phrase. We're going to toggle between this delayed um, beat and the original beat. So we're going to run just this original beat into here. And then we are going to just, as you might have guessed, just use a delay operator with feedback off. And run your input into here. And then when the condition is false, we'll get that delayed signal. And so it might not be kind of obvious to you uh, to kind of think about using a delay in this way for delaying events. Typically, if we're using delays, we're thinking about it in the audio realm, we're thinking about, um, you know, dub delays, things like that. Um, but thinking about uh, delays as a buffer as your kind of short term memory that you can use for pushing events in and, uh, in and out of time. Uh, and doing all sorts of other things in your sequence uh, can be really powerful when you start thinking in this way. And, and patching in gen can help you kind of think in that way and uh, open up some possibilities for you. So we want to be able to control uh, a couple of things. We need to be able to control the delay time. And the easiest way to do that is to make a MS to SAMS object. And that will convert milliseconds that we're going to have coming into this second inlet and into the amount of samples that we want to use, uh, which is what our gen object expects because everything in the gen level is working in samples. So the, we're almost actually re uh, done here. We just need to um, be able to toggle this condition. So we need to be able to figure out uh, which, which beat is we're on at the moment. So we'll need a counter. And instead of counting to a certain number, we're going to use a uh, an object that you may or may not have run into before. It's a very powerful kind of object, but um, very, very utilitarian object. It's the, the humble modulo operator. And if you haven't come across the modulo operator before, um, you'll, you'll, you'll begin to see it again and again. Um, I'm sure many of you have, but what we're doing here is uh, using the modulo to, to wrap around so that we never get to uh, above a certain number. So it doesn't matter what our counter is. It really uh, just, we have the ability to determine whether the, um, the beat is the first beat or the second beat. To give you an example of how that works, in case you haven't used uh, the modulo operator before, I'll do it out in Max land where we have uh, UI objects that we can use. And so what a modulo operation is, is the remainder of a division. So if we divide two by two, um, we get uh, no remainders because two evenly divides into two. And we get a one remainder if we have three going in and, you know, so on and so forth. So we never get to two. We just have this, um, these two states. So you can, ch you can change that number to whatever you want. So if you want to be able to um, just always wrap around to three individual um, numbers that can refer to states, uh, the modulo op operator is going to be your friend there. All right. So let's, uh, let's finish this off. So on the downbeat, this is going to evaluate to zero. So, and on the offbeat, it's going to evaluate to one. So let's double check our two states. Uh, when the value is true, i.e. one, uh, we're going to pass in the dry signal. And when the value is false uh, or zero, uh, the, we're going to pass in the delayed signal. So we could flip these patch cables around, but uh, I'm feeling lazy. So I'm going to uh, do this with, I'm going to flip this Boolean. Uh, with the equal equals equals zero. Um, that's a useful way that if you want to flip a zero to a one, you can do it that way. 
And that's basically it for, for this, uh, this little gen patcher. There's a couple of things that we can do um, that we'll continue to do in the future. Um, obviously, when we build more complicated things, it's going to be more useful to, uh, to do things like this. But one thing that I really like to do when I'm working in gen is um, you, you don't have a console when you're in gen, right? Like you can't post things to the max console or like when you're in other programming languages, you know, it's really useful to, to post debug messages. So what I like to do is, um, you know, everything is a number in, in gen. So we need to use, uh, we need to send messages to ourselves either in numbers or in uh, encodings that we can observe in live.scope in our oscilloscope. So this, you know, very, very simple algorithm, we can use um, this second outlet to indicate which beat we're on. And when we're doing this, it makes sense that to use the feature, uh, the attribute comment. And that means when we're out in the, the higher level, uh, the parent patcher, uh, if we hover over one of these, uh, the second outlet here, it'll tell us what, um, it'll tell us the message we've put in this, uh, this comment. So we can do that similarly in the inlets. Uh, here, it would make sense to give the comment Uh, swing in milliseconds and that will annotate your inlets for you so there we go very simple start but um we'll we'll reuse this this will be really useful when we start generating lots of other beats and and want to give them some feeling um and so we'll save this off and next time we jump in we'll work towards building some ratcheting sequences some euclidean sequences and and things like that and how we deal with quantizers and probability and all that sort of awesome fun stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.